In the Holy Quran, God speaks about the stages of man's embryonic development, 1,400 years before modern-day scientists discovered important information on creation of man and his development, we created man from an extract of clay. Then we made him as a drop in a place of settlement, firmly fixed. Then we made the drop into an alaka, leech, suspended thing, and blood clot, then we made the alaka into a mutter, chewed-like substance. Noble Quran 23 12-14 Literally the Arabic word alaka has three meanings, leech suspended thing blood clot 1. In comparing a leech to the embryo at the alaka stage, we find similarity between the two. The developing human p.8. Also, the embryo as this stage obtains nourishment from the blood of the mother, similar to the leech which feeds on the blood of others. Human development is described in Quran and Sunnah p.36. 2. The second meaning of the word alaka is suspended thing. The suspension of the embryo, during the alaka stage, in the womb of the mother very appropriately fits this description. 3. The third meaning of the word alaka is blood clot. We find that the external appearance of the embryo and its sacs during the alaka stage is similar to that of a blood clot. This is due to the presence of relatively large amounts of blood present in the embryo during this stage. Also during this stage the blood in the embryo does not circulate until the end of the third week. So the embryo at this stage is like a clot of blood. By examining a diagram of the primitive cardiovascular system in an embryo during the alaka stage we would notice the external appearance of the embryo and its sacs is similar to that of a blood clot due to the presence of relatively large amounts of blood present in the embryo the developing human, p. 65 So the three meanings of the word alaka correspond accurately to the descriptions of the embryo at the alaka stage. The next stage mentioned in the verse is the mutter stage. The Arabic word mutter means chewed like substance. If one were to take a piece of gum and chew it in his mouth, and then compare it with the embryo at the mutter stage, we would conclude that they would be almost identical because of the Semites at the back of the embryo that somewhat resemble teeth marks in a chewed substance. How could Muhammad, peace be upon him, have possibly known all this 1,400 years ago when scientists have only recently discovered this using advanced equipment and powerful microscopes which did not exist at that time? Ham and Leeuwenhoek were the first scientists to observe human sperm cells using an improved microscope in 1677 AD, more than 1,000 years after Muhammad, peace be upon him. They mistakenly thought that the sperm cell contained a miniature preformed human being that grew when it was deposited in the female genital tract the developing human. P.9 Professor Keith Moore is one of the world's prominent scientists in the fields of anatomy and embryology and is the author of the book entitled Developing Human, which has been translated into eight languages. This book is considered a scientific reference work and was chosen by a special committee in the United States as the best book authored by one person. Dr. Keith Moore is a professor of anatomy and cell biology at the University of Toronto, Toronto, Canada. In 1984, he received the most distinguished award presented in the field of anatomy in Canada, the JCB Grant Award from the Canadian Association of Anatomists. He has directed many international associations, such as the Canadian and American Association of Anatomists and the Council of the Union of Biological Sciences. In 1981, during the 7th Medical Conference in Dammam, Saudi Arabia, Professor Moore said, It has been a great pleasure for me to help clarify statements in the Quran about human development. It is clear to me that these statements must have come to Muhammad from God, or Allah because almost all of this knowledge was not discovered until many centuries later. This proves to me that Muhammad must have been the messenger of God, or Allah the reference for this statement is on this is the truth consequently. Professor Moore was asked the following question, does this mean that you believe that the Quran is the word of God? He replied, I find no difficulty in accepting this. During one conference, Professor Moore stated, because the staging of human embryos is complex, owing to the continuous process of change during development, it is proposed that a new system of classification could be developed using the terms mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah, sayings of Muhammad, peace be upon him. The proposed system is simple, comprehensive, and conforms with present embryological knowledge. The intensive studies of the Quran and Hadith, reliably transmitted sayings and reports of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the last four years have revealed a system of classifying human embryos that is amazing since it was recorded in the 7th century AD although Eric Stadel, the founder of the science of embryology, realized that chick embryos developed in stages from his studies of hen's eggs in the 4th century BC, he did not give any details about these stages. As far as it is known from the history of embryology, little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. 
For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th century AD. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. He could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man with absolutely no scientific training. Think about the humans. How did we all get here? What is the nature of mankind? What causes us to act as we do? Are we ungrateful to the one who created us and sustains us? What is this clue? Think about yourself. Did you create yourself?